Welcome, church. And now, if you will, read with me our call to worship. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt God's name together. We will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise will always be on our lips. When we wander afar, God welcomes us back. When we cry out in despair, God hears us and delivers us from all our troubles. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are we when we take refuge in God's care. Amen. And now, read with me, speak with me, listen to our opening prayer. Let us pray. God of the cosmos and God of every heartbeat, you touch every corner of creation, yet when times are hard, we wonder if you've deserted us and we become fearful. Give us the eyes to see and the hearts to know that you never desert us and never send us away in need. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to remind us of your closeness and to give us life so that ours might be eternal. Amen. And now we have a reading from the Hebrew Bible from the book of Job. There is not one of us here, I would venture to say, who hasn't felt exactly the way Job does in this following passage. Where are you, God? Is the question we ask at times of deepest torment. When a child is sick or our loved ones are hurting, when we see injustice, pain, and tragedy in the world, Job laments, and we often lament, where are you, God? The following passage from Job is his answer to his friends' comments on the condition they find Job in. Job has a different way of looking at the pain than they do, and so listen for the words of hope that Job gives us in verse 6. But God would give, give heed to me. This is the reading from Job chapter 23, verses 1 through 9 and 16 through 17. The author writes, Then Job answered, Today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn what he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Would God intend me with, would God contend with me in this greatness of his power? No, but God would give heed to me. There, an upright person could reason with him, and I should be acquitted forever by my judge. If I go forward, he is not there. Or backward, I cannot perceive him. On the left, he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to the right, but I cannot see him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. If only I could vanish in darkness and thick darkness would cover my face. And now, our New Testament reading, where Job assures us that God listens to us in our deepest woes, the psalmist in today's lectionary, Psalm 22, helps us to voice those woes. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus himself echoed that cry from the cross, letting us know that he suffered as we suffer. We cry out our deepest sorrows. And now the author of Hebrews tells us to understand what Job understood, that God hears us when we cry. The word of God is alive for each of us, a living, powerful, energetic word for us, letting us know that each of us can find mercy and grace to help our times of deepest need. This is the reading in Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. 
It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart, and before him no creature is hidden. But all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need.